Hi everyone. I wanted to talk about doing backgrounds but doing a little tiny stitchery, you know. Sometimes you want not just a colour. Um, so I, the first one I wanted to do is I just grabbed some scraps that are in front of me. You know, I'm not even going to bother with cutting them the way that I want to shape them. But you could, you know. And I put that one on top there. Okay, put that one on top. And then there's this bit here. They're all see-through, you see, so they make an interesting, a very interesting blend of colours. What do you see? I sort of think, well, that looks a bit like, um, like it should have a cactus or something in front of it. So yeah, I could use that and just do a simple little cactus or something in a, in a slow stitch, simple design, and that would be me. Or you could just follow these lines and they would be the hills and the, and the clouds, put some grasses in, oh, so much. So, you know, we might do something there. That's, that's just one idea. I've got another square of plain calico here. Another one I like to do is I like to use um, fraying. I really like fraying because I think you get colours through it and I like that idea. So I'm just going to take this little tiny bit here and see what we've got. See how that's pretty. Um, it's even prettier and you could put a colour underneath that and stuff like that. So, you could probably play with something like that as well. Alright, so here's a bit of um, fluff. And I'll put a bit of fluff down, see what that does. Can we see it through that? Hmm, maybe, maybe it needs something lighter. So you could have a net on top, you could have all kinds of things on top with overlays. Still like this stuff. Does it look like we're getting a little garden? I think we could. I think we could do that. Mm. Take myself off. I think that's a problem right there. Isn't that beautiful? Some little colours. Colours are nice. You can layer two up if you wanted. Well, actually, that could be a little hill that's covered in of flowers. So, see what I mean? We've done two little things like that with just overlays. You know, if you want to do it, well, endlessly, you can do that. So I quite like things like that. Um, uh, I've got this bit. I like that. I do love these barley boutiques. What could we do to make that an interesting background? Ooh. <laughs> um, but, you know, we shouldn't do everything the same. We should try and mix it up a bit. So I've just grabbed a bit of, of brown gauze. How would that be? Just add a little. It would tone that down, wouldn't it? But maybe a stripe of something else underneath that. Maybe. I kind of like, oh, okay, we'll use this. No. This is just a piece of wool. That's going to go like that. Pop that on top. I could do something with that with that too. Or I might want to put in, look, what's this? This is a shiny bit of something left over from before. Put that in the background. Put this on the top. Put that on the top of that. Yeah, 
So something like that would work as well. Oh, that's interesting. What are we going to do with the last one? Uh, just, just a bit of nice fabric. So whatever your style, you can just make it to suit yourself. This beside us because we've used that a few times lately. <laughs> this one's a bit ripped and torn, so I might just keep it like that. Or I might get another piece. I'm just seeing what it does. I like to manipulate fabrics and just see what they will do, whether they'll do anything exciting. Or what I consider exciting. Goes nice with that, and that. So what it's done is that it's a couple of pieces of fabric have given us a starting point for maybe an idea. You know, this was left over from that. Can I use that? Maybe. So I think what we'll do, and I've been making this up as I go along, is how about we just do four little tiny pictures and I'll just show you how simple it can be. So let's just use the glue stick and maybe a pin or tack around the edge, whatever you've got to do to keep it in place. One, two, three, four. All different. Let's have a go at that. All right, so here's our little first picture. And I have tacked around the edge to make my life easier. I've found a creamy kind of color. So let's see how quickly, simply, we can make something. So I'm going to thread these two strands because I want a nice thick line, I think. And what I've decided to do, I think, is I'm just going to go around this and extend those leaves up. It's a good start. Pretend like that's continuing on. That's kind of outside the edge of my picture there, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to bring it back around and do the other side of this leaf. I'm just going to And if I think that mark wasn't terribly successful, I'll do something else. You know, it's no big deal to me. I'll just go like this. I'm going to continue down in there. I'll go back up again. All it will be is a starting point. I mean, if it was fantastic, I'd just leave it as it was. So it doesn't take much to be creative, folks. You just grab a couple of pieces of material, even just the one single thread, and see what you can make. Underneath that one. What would you do next? What else could you do? Hmm? Well, I don't know. What do those leaves suggest? To me, I'm kind of looking at it and thinking they look a little bit like olives. 
olive leaves. Well, they could be by the time we finished with them. Well, what would be the simplest way for us to pop in a few olives? Hmm. Hold that thought. How about buttons? I collect buttons from the op shop. That's a charity shop. Now, because I like them. I like a button. Look at these delicate little beauties. You know, you could do something like that. It really wouldn't take much at all to do something, would it? And, you know, by the time you isolate that, that's another thing. Let's have a look for one of those. This one's probably a little bit big, but it gives you a good idea. Can you see? Oops. Buttons are always good in little groupings. Um... Now, if you wanted to put it in a surround like that and it wasn't big enough, what would you do? I think I would grab another, I'd use this beautiful ragged edge and I would grab another fabric. If I had it handy, I'd probably use green, but I've got brown handy, so that's going to do me. And I would attach it to it like that. I'd make that part of my design. I'd have ragged edges showing you know and I could either use my these buttons if I preferred it maybe you want to make some other fruit let's see what else we could do that's unusual I kind of feel like you want them similar so you can rearrange things like that and come up with ideas of what you might like you know but, you know, that basically, mm -hmm, pretty simple. And if someone would look at that and say, oh, I like what you've done there. And, um, oh. So I hope, I hope you're finding this interesting. It's a little bit silly. But, uh, yeah. I like to encourage people to have a go at things, you see. So, all right, let's just say that one's done for now. Let's have a look at the next. What can we do with this one? Let's have a look at this. This is the one that I said. I haven't sewn it round yet. Oh, maybe I'll just do the, the stitching through or something. I'm just reaching for something. Variegated would be perfect. Got a few colours there. All the kind of colors that I wanted see so I'm gonna these are really nice threads can't for the moment think what they are but I will they come in three so you just got to separate out as many as you need so I want one anyway so starting over here And I'd just be inclined to just do a bit of a wavy line to suggest. This is why this is not a good needle. I'm just doing some hills. Some lines in the landscape. I'd quite like grasses on this one, but we'll see. Well, this is actually where those two layers of gauze are overlapping each other. So this is good. It's holding it down. Got a 
already looks quite pretty. You could have used a much thinner uh, thread. That probably would have looked nicer, but I had that handy, so I'm going for it. The idea is I'm just trying to do something quick for you. Yeah, so you could mix that up and do some thick and thin. Get rid of that pin, I think. That's better. I think because I've used a thicker thread, I won't go over it and do a... Um, no, I could maybe... No really want to go over the top of it with doing a um, cactus. I had thought I'd do a cactus in an outline of black. That's something else that we could do on that. But because I've used such a thick thread, I think I'll just do this. because it's variegated, it'll change all the time. And let's talk about this one. Unfortunately, the camera didn't work, uh, but I really didn't do anything except I used a variegated thread here, and it's quite a thick thread, and I just went. And it's really where the uh, fabrics were overlapped, so it's held them down. Now, to make things simple for myself, I just saw this here, so I grabbed that and I said, yeah, something like that's nice. Love that little touch of green. And then seeing though it's got a little touch of green, I thought, at this side, I don't know. Try things around differently and see how you like them. But uh, I quite liked that. I could spread it apart if I really wanted to. And then I was just going to use a thread and I used, I grabbed a green one here, but you know, something else would be nice. Burnt orange or such like. So I'm going to start with attaching that. I'm keeping it all very, very, very simple. No fancy tricks. We just make sure that we catch it in as we stitch. So we'll do a few lines across, backwards and forwards. Uh, make sure that we do get that in, but also that we get a few nice lines. This doesn't even need to be anything. It can be abstract. It could be. It doesn't have to be a scene. I happen to, to I keep doing things that are... Um, nature based because I like nature. I spent a lifetime looking at nature so I know what it looks like but I just love random colors as well so you could even bring a third color in if you wanted with this like a nice burnt orange would be lovely brown, something darker perhaps. And if you still felt like it needed something, and um, yeah, probably it would be nice with a little bit of dark on there. So I'd be inclined to grab something like a brown or something. Just do a straight stitch. And all I'm doing is creating a center point of interest somewhere, you know. So many things I could have done, but I'm just thinking, well, this, this is simple and I'm making a few grasses. Yeah, we'll keep to the one stitch so that it doesn't get complicated. Can you see that it was, um, it just needed some sort of focal point. Like on this one here, we put in our buttons and on this one here, we've just done a tiny bit of a darker color. Number three, coming right up. This one here, I've just done 
a running sort of stitch circle to make that circle bigger and now I'm just doing a little tiny bit of seed stitch because it looks like that here see that looks like seed stitch and that's the same thing so I'm just going to do that I could have done another little landscape because that does look like a hill you know I could uh, I just saw it let's make it different And now I'm going to do a little bit of a little bit of these petals. Just like we did with the leaves. I'm using it to hold that down at the same time there. See? I'm just going out. Now if I wanted to, I could go the whole hog and do some more, but we're trying to be quick here, so I won't. I'm just going to do this instead. So experiment with your scraps and have fun. Don't use a needle like this. <laughs> this is too, too thick. So. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to pretend these are like uh, I can't think of the word for the flower. Anyway, but they're the central bit sticks up and all the petals come down from it so that would be nice fits in with what we got and because my thread's nearly running out so that's good too so then I would go here and I would pop in some more seed stitch I could bring in another uh, colour here if I wanted. We may. What have I got? So the camera is still misbehaving. I just wanted to show you there how I did use it a little bit there to pick out some of those leaves. I could go and do a whole lot more. It would be beautiful to pick out all of them. Um, and then I did a little bit of seed stitch. And then I thought, okay, wouldn't it be nice with just a few beads? You know, so it would be quite pretty, I think. So here's the last one. Really is very delicate and pretty, I think. It's crying out for flowers. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. Because I said that you can just do something abstract. And so let's do that. So, so good when you get those variegated threads that you can use so much. So when you create, don't judge yourself. You know, just have fun. So in this one here, I am just going to do some random straight-ish lines. If you want to be straight, you can get a ruler, you can mark it. I don't really care for straightness. See, I'm already crooked. Well, in that case, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go crooked and see what happens. Just doing some basic lines that are holding most of the pieces down. It also teaches you what, what 
colours go good together. Nature's a really good uh, teacher for that. Have a look at nature. I'll just go somewhere else so it's holding a different area down. So here's our last one. We did some rough stitching there. We could do a lot of things. So we'll make it abstract. So I'll just grab some fluff and stuff. What is that? I don't even know. Something that's come unraveled. That'll do. Uh, little this fluffy, leafy stuff. That's nice. What else have we got? A bit of that darker colour. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just looking to see what happens if I go like that. Twist them all together. Make our own arty thread. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I think something like that could be okay. And then I would just stitch it down and then perhaps finish off with maybe some buttons or something. Have a look. All right. Well, it's not going to win any prizes, but I think you get the idea. Couching, uh, layering, stitching. You know, they're all fun things that you can do. Don't forget you can add your buttons or beads or bits and bobs. Keep your scraps. Look at these interesting things. Who knows what they were originally? All right, well, that may have seemed a little strange. But, you know, even now I'm looking at them thinking, oh, I could do that, and I could do that, and that would be nice. And So it's given inspiration to me, different things I could try. Next time we'll try some other way to colour a background or see some other way to gain some inspiration. Anyway, my name's Tracy. Art Fibre Stitch is my business. If you do like what you've seen, do press like and subscribe. Um, and if you're trying to find me anywhere, all of the links are below in the description. So once again, thank you for watching.